Why were police patrols missing on New Year's Eve? How do we make the capital's road safe? Does Delhi need more police personnel? Some of the questions we'll raise. Joining me now, Kiran Bedi, former IPS officer, joins me. Dr. Bedi, what is your first response to what you've seen and heard in this case? I think we need to readdress and relook at the dismantling of the PCR van's positioning. We do not know what is the policy decision which went into pros and cons. But we need to reposition PCR vans on the on the roads as it was. Mm -hmm. Instead of having dismantled, we could have strengthened the position. And on such occasions like New Year Eve, etc., where you know the lot of revelry will be on late till late night, we could have strengthened vehicular presence on these stretches. Number one, I think this is one we need to readdress. So when the honourable Home Minister is asking for it, we need to relook at because the PCR vans actually have gone off the road and instead been allocated to area police stations. And they are not now they are parked in police stations or doing police station work, whatever rightly or wrongly. But I think we need to relocate it because PCR vans had a response time. PCR van at seven minutes drive. They were actually proud of the fact that today we have a six minute time and seven minute, etc. So number one, I think we need to relook at this. Number two is, I think there's been a tremendous, we need to use greater technology, particularly cameras, not isolated cameras here and there of shopkeepers or here and there. I think we need to have a centralized um, uh, technology system. So greater use of technology is a second answer. Third is um, coordination with civic agencies. I think there's a serious lack because the street lighting has a direct bearing on road safety and also the road repairs. So there is a, a really, to my mind, a lack of coordination between civic agencies and of the, of the police, which has a direct bearing, as I said, safety has a bearing. Fourth is, there's a, of course, a serious decline of fear of law. Serious decline. People, these youngsters are not afraid that police will come and take a big deal I think there is an absence of fear of law. How do we re re bring this back? Fourth, sixth, last but not the least, amongst all the points I've said, is parenting. I think parenting young boys is a very serious uh, deficiency now in our society, whether it's crimes against women or it's drunken driving at night or the kind of behavior. So these are five key things I think we need to rework on. You know, I, I just want to for a moment step back on two things. One is clearly a part of this road was very badly lit. Number two, it appeared that there were police patrols missing even though it was New Year's Day and you mentioned that point. Do you believe that we are infrastructurally short of the required number of policemen on the beat, yes, on the ground, been, and particularly as Delhi regularly. keeps expanding? We are not regularly reviewing our deficiency in resources, whether it's manpower or technology or, uh, um, uh, or vehicular management. I think we're not reviewing it. We must do a regular review, regular audit, depending on the crime situation of a particular police station or for a district, if you're looking at it as a unit. We need to regularly um, re-audit our uh, state of resources in the respective areas. Let me also ask you this. Do you believe, therefore, that where does the buck stop? Who is to be held accountable? Five people have been arrested. Will those, do you believe that someone within the police setup also needs to be held accountable? Well, the, I think you are looking at police policies. You are crime prevention policies. PCR dismantling must have been a police headquarters policy. So I think why did they go into this kind of dismantling instead of strengthening and linking it with motorcycles? One is a poor vehicle, then you link it with the, police, uh, with the motorcycle presence. Instead of strengthening the system, this has to be a police headquarter decision. Who took this decision? What are the pros and cons? What, what went into it? And whether it should come back or not, we need to rework. But we need to have motorcycle patrolling also, along with the PCR van, which we had. There was an extension of PCR van with the motorcycles. I don't know why they disappeared. But motorcycles need to be up. But as I said, uh, police must report roads which are poorly lit. And the municipal corporation, whoever is in charge of the lighting, must respond. In fact, it should be a PCR call. Because lighting has a direct bearing on, on uh, safety, road safety, and also crimes against women. One final question you mentioned at the end, that there was no fear of law among your five factors. There's a sense that whether it is those driving in the nights uh, with alcohol, uh, having taken alcohol or driving fast, 
they seem to be getting away because there is a sense that there isn't zero tolerance for this. Do you believe we need zero tolerance for fire speed driving or indeed alcohol driving on our streets? We need to find ways, particularly through technology, when no one gets away. Yes, technology with very aggressive, regular preventive policing, where traffic police and local police must work together because it has an overbearing. It's high speed driving and negligent driving and criminal negligence. So traffic police and local police must also work together. They can divide beats among themselves and regularly be present and joint patrolling in not only waiting for New Year Eve, but on a regular basis. It's called group patrolling at night where the motorcycles do group patrolling of particular areas. It's called the evening group patrolling or late night group patrolling, where the youngsters are afraid of doing these zigzags and drunken drivings and the fear of getting clawed. So get preventive arrests, make preventive arrests, crimes against, I think we need to, preventive policing, preventive crime prevention, I think also is very highly deficient. Right, very strong points made there by you, Dr. Bedi. I appreciate your joining us and sharing with us your thoughts on what is really a gruesome start to 2023. Thank you so much for joining me here on the news today.